Hi everyone, this is Mike, and um, I have a happy, tw first of all, happy 2016 to everybody. It's my first video of the year. And um, second of all, hold on. And second of all, <coughs> um, I, this is going to be a double review. I'm going to be reviewing two games. Um, I'm going to be reviewing first is, the game I'm going to be reviewing first is Among the Sleep. And then I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars Battlefront. Among the Sleep. Among the Sleep is a uh, first-person survival horror game where you play as a toddler. And basically what happens is you and this teddy bear, you go on this um, very through-the-looking-glass-esque type of journey where everything is dreamlike and creepy. And um, it's a, I, I enjoy the experience. Um... I will say that the stealth mechanics are pretty light. There's not a whole lot of them, and they're in the stealth. It's probably one of the easier stealth games I've experienced. Um, but the thing that I want to comment on is a couple of things. Number one, they go there. Just because you're a toddler doesn't mean you can't be killed, because not only can you be killed by a monster at, at, at a certain point, you can fall into water and drown. That's right. Normally, you would think that they would just make it to where you couldn't go in the water, but no, you could fall off and go. You can fall into it. So, you can kill it. The, you, a toddler can die. Now, granted, from the story, things aren't necessarily as literal as they as things look. You know, thing where you're at isn't necessarily a literal place, but still, a toddler can technically die in this game. Um, but not only that, I have to talk about the ending, but I'm going to talk about it in a way that doesn't spoil it. What I'll say about it is eventually what really happened <coughs> is revealed at the end. And it is much more disturbing than what you've played. Um, as for the puzzles, there's really not that much puzzles. They're just there to give you things to do. Um, it's really more about a unique experience and about say, commenting on certain um, issues that go on and telling them from a, pers from a unique perspective. That's really what this game is about at the end of this day. And that's all I can really say about it without spoiling it because you really should experience for it for yourself. It's worth picking up. You can download it on, um, PlayStation, on the PlayStation Store for very cheap. It's like, what, 12 something? If you're a Plus member? So yeah, Among the Sleep, a unique experience. Um, the only complaints I really have about it is there are some moments where the game glitched out where I got stuck. There was one moment where I had to restart because I got stuck somewhere that I shouldn't got stuck at. But overall, it's a interesting and pretty bold experience. Because um, like I said, not only can a toddler die, um, either from drowning or from being killed by a monster... Um, the ending go is much darker than the game than than you think, and that's all I can say about it. So yeah, thumbs up for Among the Sleep. Also, the other the next game I want to talk about is Star Wars Battlefront. Now, I waited until I played all the modes once before before this review, so it took me a while because I had to work nights, and then there was an issue with my internet, so, um, which I will, I'm going to talk about in more detail here. Star Wars Battlefront looks and feels Star Warsy. It's a, it's, in a nutshell, it's a Star Wars multi multiplayer shooter. And I'm okay with that. That's what I want. A lot of people were complaining of the lack of content, and that's, um, I have not I did play Battlefront 2, but not until recently. And there's, I think there's a big difference between playing it in 2005 and playing it now when there's no online for the PS2. It makes a big difference. Um, I personally am not going to get getting, getting the season pass because of the whole like controversy surrounding it. And it's just too expensive. And I don't really buy season passes anyway. Um, but what I'll say from what's there, I'm not going to talk about what's lacking compared to the other games. I am going to talk about what's there. And what's there is 
basically a Star Wars multiplayer shooter. It's very... It's very pick-up-and-play. There's not a lot of depth to it, but that's okay. I don't mind that. Some people might, but I don't. But here's the most embarrassing part. I... It, that game showed me how badly I suck at multiplayer. And this isn't just this game. It's all multiplayer in general. I'm terrible at it. Like, I've gotten... On several modes, I got last place with zero kills and, like, 20 deaths. Like, if you were to watch me play, you would think I was blowing it on purpose. But that's not the game's fault. That's mine for being... for sucking at multiplayer. But, um... For being a Star Wars multiplayer shooter, that's really all I asked for it to be, and it's all it really is, and I'm okay with it. It's what I wanted, that's why I wanted the game, I thought it was a cool idea. So I'm like, yeah, multiplayer, uh, Star Wars multiplayer shooter, cool. Um, as for the modes, um, I think, first I want to talk about the look of the game. It looks fantastic, it sounds great, obviously. Um, you can't, there's no in-game party chat, but you can use the party you have, to, you have to actually be in a party to uh, chat with people, but at least the systems have that. Um, if I have any complaints about it, there's a couple. Number one, some of the modes seem redundant. So, let's say, for example, droid. Um, there's a droid mode where you have to, you know, turn on droids and protect them and all that. But there's also a cargo mode, for example, or, or a drop drop mode, drop mode, like. Drop type thing, not cargo, drop. Cargo is actually different. Where there's pods. So the droids and the pods are kind of similar in terms of the gameplay mechanics. I mean, in other words, a lot of the modes are a little too similar to each other in terms of what the game mechanics are, what the goals are, what you're supposed to do. There's all these modes, and a lot of them are pretty similar. Some of, There's a few ones that stand out that are different, but so much of it is um, go here, defend this, take theirs, and that's basically a lot of the modes in the game. Uh, another complaint that I have is regarding the um, um, the survival mode, which is basically horde mode. There are too many ATSTs, and they take a long time to take down. And that stops being fun after the sec after the second after probably the maybe the second or third one they just go a little crazy with them maybe have one ATST maybe save that for the end for like the final wave um, but other than that as far as how fun is it to play it is pretty fun to play it's not deep it's just a fun simple game to play it doesn't mean it's easy if you suck at multiplayer you're gonna suck at multiplayer which is my problem but um, it's still a fun multiplayer shooter. It's beautiful, it sounds great, and it's fun to play. And it's really all I want from it. So, I, I overall, I think it's a good game. I'm definitely going to go back and play it some more. I'm probably There are certain modes I prefer better than others. But, um, and also, I like that there's offline modes, like and, and those modes have split screen. That's something that we rarely see anymore. So it's great that they included that here. Um... So, um, yeah, thumbs up for Battlefront as well. Not a big thumbs up, it's not like a Game of the Year material, but for what it is, I like it. Now, as far as comparing it to what it was before, to what Battlefront was before, like I said, I can't make that comparison because, um, I, um, only played Battlefront 2 recently, and that doesn't, and by now, there's, like, there's no online on PS2, so I can't really say. I know there's, like, a campaign mode in there, but I haven't really... I haven't really explored Battlefront 2 thoroughly, because there's just so much content in there, it's, like, kind of overwhelming. But, um... If you are upset about the lack of features and the fact that they are splitting the game up and making you pay 100 bucks for it, I understand. I that If you, you were upset about that, it's fine. I'm not upset about it. I'm just not going to buy the season pass. I'm just not going to play the full thing. I don't need to. I got what I want out of it. I got what I need out of it. So, I'm just going to play what I have, and I'm okay with that, because I'm not going to pay more and get an expensive season pass, but I'm not going to say you're going to complain about it either, because I'm just going to just not buy the season pass. Um, um, something I wanted to, to mention about Battlefront, and you, people need to know this, and it's not something that's being discussed, is that if your internet connection is, is weak or too slow... If your internet connection is too slow, I had this happen one night. 
I couldn't move my character. I could get into a match, and I could get shot, but I couldn't move my character or do anything with my character because of my slow internet. Now, when my internet speeds up to a point, my internet's slow in general. It's like 4 megabytes download speed. On a good day, I can play, but I notice that the hit, my hit detection has issues, and, it'll, and it says on the upper right that you might have issues with this will affect gameplay if your connection is too slow. So that's something that I need to address, and that is something that seems to be more of an issue with the new generation. With this game, uh, with Grand Theft Auto Online, and with Titanfall, there seems to it seems to be like, um, and this is a topic I should talk about in the future on its own, but I want to brief on to touch on it briefly here. For this generation, seems to require a slightly faster internet connection than the last generation. Probably because it's more demanding graphically and with a lot of stuff going on and that sort of thing. So yeah, that is something that no one's really talking about, but if you have, but if your internet connection is on the slower side, um, you might want to uh, think twice before getting into multiplayer this generation because you are going to have more issues than you did last time. This generation requires a slightly better internet connection than last gen. That is something that no one's talking about and I feel it needs to be said. It's very important and I've played three multiplayer based games. I own played three multiplayer based games this gen. Um, I have more, but I haven't really played the multiplayer on Evolve because I did one match and nobody was there really. But, um, but I had I, Titanfall, GTA Online, Star Wars Battlefront, three games I've tried so far, different games, and they've, different systems even as well. And um, definitely get a better internet connection if you can, um, if, if multiplayer is your thing this generation. So that's a very important thing to note at the, for the end of the video. As for the games, I just mentioned thumbs up for both of them. Um, Among the Sleep is an interesting experiment that I think everyone should try out once and go, hey, that was interesting. Battlefront, if you're looking for a simple pick-up-and-play multiplayer shooter and you don't suck at multiplayer and your internet connection is good enough and you're a Star Wars fan, pick that up. Um, and even if you think the season pass is too expensive, just don't buy the season pass and just play the basic game. Um, but if but if you feel the content's lacking, um, I wouldn't recommend it if you are such a fan of the, the, the older games that you don't like that there's content missing. If that bothers you so much, it, getting the game is not going to change your mind on that. But if you just want to pick up and play a multiplayer Star Wars, a Star Wars-based multiplayer shooter, which is what I was looking for, it, it will serve your needs. So, um, that's all I got to say. Thank you for... Thank you for watching this double game review, and um, I will see you in a future video. Bye.